The story began in 2016 at the after party of Gorefest. We were exchanging tales of triumph and stories of carnage on the river. We also shared fantasies of future sins. One common theme was our obsession with Go Big or Go Home, a YouTube movie made by Dan McCain. Dan and his crew were pushing the sport to rivers and waterfalls that had never yet been attempted in a raft. 2013. First raft descent. See how it goes. We were inspired, but not prepared. We needed the crew, the skills, and the experience to fire it up a notch. Emerging onto the scene was dirtbag paddler Aaron Erdrich. Aaron was going big in little boats across the United States. We are here on the Western Fort. Aaron is about to send it, like always. Aaron is unique because he was running monstrous features R1, 
a facet of the sport seldom seen back in the day. Not only did he prove it was possible, he introduced R1 into the masses. And usually, you know, we're out there shredding the NAR all the time. Been really going off, been feeling really confident, voting a lot of really big shit. It's been fun.
the crew decided that if they wanted to step up their game, a trip to the Pacific Northwest was a must. With some of the top athletes all within a 30 mile radius, it was a whitewater mecca for sure. The only thing steeper than the waterfalls was the learning curve. It didn't go all that well either. <laughs> I felt scared as fuck. Being surrounded by so many experienced boaters was humbling to say the least.
Ecuador. Time to leave the familiarity of cell phones, guidebooks, and the concrete boat ramps to embrace the jungle life. We enjoyed the local culture, along with flash floods, flesh-eating parasites, and the mud. We met a lot of like-minded boaters along the way that became instant friends, but we never made it too far without the grim reminder that rivers everywhere are being threatened by dams, deforestation, climate change, pollution, and the ever-growing global population. Let's start by talking about the Pia Tua Libre project, what that's all about and why it's important to you guys right around here. Pia Tua Libre nace hace tres años, eh, aquí en el Tena. La gente se reunió para proteger al río Pia Tua, ya que el gobierno anunció de que se comenzaba a construir una central hidroeléctrica sin avisarle a nadie. Entonces la gente de las comunidades, que son más de 300 personas que viven en el área de Piatúa, recibieron la noticia de un día para el otro que la represa iba a ser construida sin preguntarles. Entonces la gente empezó a movilizarse, nosotros también, y empezamos a consultarle al gobierno por qué iban a construir una hidroeléctrica y nadie daba respuestas, por eso decidimos hacer la Tua Libre para que la gente de Pastaza y de Napo se enterara, la gente de Ecuador y el mundo se enterara de lo que estaba pasando. A partir de ahí nosotros nos reunimos con varios kayakistas y e hicimos el primer Piatúa Libre. Eh, éramos pocos y comenzamos muy bien. Al año siguiente la gente de las comunidades comenzó a unirse, empezaron a reclamarle al gobierno que diera explicaciones por la hidroeléctrica. El gobierno nunca abrió sus puertas, entonces este año decidimos unirnos todos juntos las comunidades, las empresas de turismo, los turistas, eh, los, los transportistas, la gente del pueblo de Santa Clara y todos nos reunimos e hicimos este gran evento llamado el Piatúa Libre eh, que es básicamente para solicitarle al gobierno que tome conciencia de lo que está haciendo eh, la represa no tiene sentido, es un río que no tiene suficiente agua para ser construida una represa eh, sabiendo los problemas que hay aquí en Ecuador con tantos ríos eh, en esta área, tanto con el río Piatúa, Hondachi, Puzuno, Tena, Pano, eh, Misahuayí, eh, Quijos, Cosanga, eh, Topo, eh, Pastaza, tantos ríos que hay en el, en el área que son de los mejores para el turismo. El gobierno quiere construir centrales hidroeléctricas. Tomar conciencia, respetar a la gente local con sus decisiones, porque son sus tierras. Proteger los ríos y eh, destinar más eh, investigación antes de construir proyectos. Bueno. <laughs> Gracias. Bueno. Thanks, buddy. Bien. That was perfect. <laughs> Gracias. Perfect. <laughs> The yaw claw? Like a mini Justin, what uh, happened out there today? Fucking meat and taters. <laughs> meat and taters. Got a, got a little spicy in there, bunch of surfs. Mini boats couldn't get over the holes. Everyone getting surfed out. Uh, cowabunga. And uh, one flip and a rough swim to shore with the boat in the paddle for me. And uh, the team decided it was uh, a little too stout for the mini boats on the keyhole at like a million grand. <laughs> <laughs> spicy medium. Yeah, spicy medium. Wasn't we went it? from spicy medium to spicy high real quick. Might be 
the species rabbit of the run. <laughs> I like species. <laughs> Not the longest one, but the species. Yeah, species. yeah. Huh. Was it spicy or specie? Species. 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 species medium. <laughs> Es difícil disimular lo que pasa por mi mente cuando te tengo de frente. Yeah. Esas ganas de tocar ese cuerpo lentamente, divertirnos malamente con tu piel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y hasta que la noche se acabe, bailamos al y reggaeton. Hermosa y a tu cuerpo lo sabe. Baila conmigo, tú no bailas con cualquiera Hagamos de la fiesta en nuestro dito primavera No estamos para por la nada, estás tomando momentos Estamos para disfrutar y vivir una nueva era La más loca, la que más se atreve La envidia de todas las mujeres Estás soltera, estás bien Hey, give me a clap! Las cosas sí que tienen poderes Mami, tienes lo que ninguna chica tiene Tanto flow que no se compara en niveles Mi modelo 
de ti tengo 10 mil carteles Eres ahí, sí, espero que no me congeles Paso a paso demuestro lo que ella tiene Sin Hermosa tu cara es la mera mera Me encanta el look de la nueva era Dile a Mike que ya le encontré nuera Que esa nena ya es mía, la loca para afuera Así que tranqui, tranqui Que ella se lo goza con un funky, funky La beso y pico como un monkey, monkey Es tan dulce que le dicen pinky, pinky, bebé Eres mi miel, mi anabel Tu favorito y tu perro fiel Ese nivel que tú cargas Se te ve tan bonita en esa tanga Dale, muévelo, muévelo, muévelo Cuando cuento el trip en mi tajo te flow Dale, muévelo, muévelo, muévelo Tú naciste pa' esto, pa' el reggaetón Baila hasta que la noche se acabe Bailamos al side reggaetón Hermosa y a tu cuerpo lo sabe Te bailas con esa pasión Si lo haces como eso lo mueves Yo me imagino eso en acción, acción Chicas, sé que tú tienes la clave Baila conmigo esta canción El lunes
tell me how to do it. After two weeks of adventure south of the equator, home was sounding pretty nice. Colorado was on its way to seeing historic snowpack and a 1 in 300 year avalanche cycle. Huge runoff season? Probably. Blown out creeks? Definitely. But what about all that avalanche debris? We soon would be faced with new challenges and hazards on the creeks we'd been planning for months on running. I think we're kind of fucked. We should have bled the air out of that tube when we had the chance. This bitch is pinned like a motherfucking son of a bitch. <laughs> So, Joel, how does it feel to be the sexiest man alive? Well, it's a new feeling for me, and I'm still growing accustomed to it. But I gotta tell you, it feels pretty good. Yeah! Today we just ran Crystal Mills Falls, one of the most iconic waterfalls in all of Colorado. It's in every bathroom I've ever been in, in any restaurant. And did two laps, and everyone crushed it. It's incredible. Joel, how was the rafting day? Well, I tell you, pretty tuckered is a long day in the truck of Tony driving and me drinking beer. And then we did a parking huck, and yeah, it was mostly park with a little huck. Yeah! It's the TP pretty stoked. <laughs> If I had to sum up in, in one word of what, what our issues here in Colorado would probably would come down to water supply. Um, lots of you probably heard about, you know, things between climate change and population increasing here in the state because it's an awesome place to live. Um, we, we end up with having an issue between how much water there's a demand for and how much um, water we actually have and, and as that's decreasing because of climate change and other other reasons. So, um, you know, a lot of what I end up doing is talking to folks about how we can protect water and keep it in the river specifically for recreation for folks to paddle on. One of the big projects we work on is up on the upper Colorado River. Um, most of you guys 
might know that's Gore Canyon and, and then all the fun um, class two and three family float sections below that. That water, the Colorado River's um, got a lot of demand on it for water use both in Colorado and then we have um, compact entitlements to meet so that water gets past state lines into the lower basin states. So um, I meet almost weekly with folks to talk about how we can um, we can show that that folks really like to recreate out there and, and how we can protect it into the future. Um, Colorado has a special water right specifically for recreational use. It's called a recreational in-channel diversion or kind of colloquially known as a RICID, okay. R-I-C-D. Um, and the way the statute is written is that um, municipalities can apply for this water right through wa their water court um, and it, they capture and control the water in the river between two points. So. And so the big demands on the water are, are yeah, what? Municipal and industrial use. Um, and yeah, so we're at the table with, with both of those water interests and, and then, you know, kind of um, we get lumped into and rightfully so with kind of the environmental and conservation side. So um, how, the, how, how we keep water rivers also for the, for the habitat. That's great. Sweet. Nailed it. You're walking on snow. It's goddamn June! <laughs> All right, we're here at Lake Creek and we came to scout primarily the bottom four rapids, but uh, on our drive up to look at the upper section, we've come to a pretty major catastrophe here. It was a big avalanche year last winter in Colorado and uh, you can see what it's done to Lake Creek here. It's all the way under a pretty massive avalanche. Uh, and there's actually one on both sides of the creek. And uh, I guess our primary concern is that it's only a matter of a week or two until a lot of this gets flushed down into those bottom four rapids we're hoping to run. There's hundreds of thousands of millions of trees right now. We're currently standing on the creek bed of Lake Creek, above the creek. There's water running under us. And once these thousands of trees go into the water, this run may be done forever. So... We're under the gun. We got to get this done, and we got to get it done now, because we may never have another chance. So that must be like a 25 foot tree. <laughs>
Pool is way too shallow. Yeah, when we hit and then we slammed the bottom, I was like, oh boy. Need to steal. <laughs> so today, we ran Daisy Creek. Didn't go too great, but uh, we're alive. So, oh! It's coming, Joe! It's coming! Watch for rocks. Joe! I think he almost should come straight up to here. Joe, it might be easier on this side of the fin.